as you look for the flyer, let me set this yeah. up. Um, Silk 2 was a funny show for us because uh, Anthony and I, you know, we'd worked together for a couple of years now. So we had been planning to do the show. I guess we didn't communicate that internally to the rest of the company that we were going to do the show. And so we, we, we put it on the Latino Step website. Uh, we put a flyer for the show on the Latino Step website announcing and marketing it and our, our our partners our business partners had no idea that we were going to do this like they were they're like silky what, what, what's this like what is this yeah. what is this event you guys are doing do you remember Dave's reaction to that or I vaguely remember it but I know that basically they weren't a it came out of the blue we didn't clear it with him we didn't give anyone the heads up we just said but I think the only reason we did it was because we felt like we just had to do a number two, right? Like we just felt like we, you know, the show was one was really good. So we got to do it too. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it was almost like organic. It wasn't, it wasn't, there was no malice. It was just like, we're going to do it. It's, you know, it was a great event. Let's try it again. And we can make some money for the organization and company and, and go from there. You get the venue. It's a club. It's on 42nd street. One of our fraternity brothers is a promoter there. So we needed obviously an, a, a venue that was 18 and over because they were college kids and a lot of college kids are under 21, but it's a club. So I think like we find out like a few days before this huge show that like the club will not allow anyone under, under uh, 21 into the club. And I was like, do you, do you remember that? Vaguely. Yeah. So I was, I almost pulled the Jesus Diaz in Miami with the uh, James L. Knight Center where I was, I almost, the show almost tanked before it even, uh, the day it even came because they were being adamant. They were like, no, we can't, it's a, it's a New York City lick club that sells liquor. We can't have under 21 people. I think, I don't know if I begged, basically I was begging and I was trying to work it out with a uh, fraternity brother, Sammy Cueva, he's a big promoter in New York. Don't know if he's still doing that. Anyway, somehow we were able to, they were able to allow under 21, but they needed like IDs and bracelets to make sure. And then after the show's over, they were going to get kicked out. Um, I don't remember if there was, there wasn't a party after the show or after the club, uh, show, was there? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But um, but yeah. So the the so our silk number two, silk and smooth two at held at Show Nightclub, New York, New York, on June fourteenth. So basically, what we were doing again in June was we were we were trying to piggyback off of the Puerto Rican Day Parade. So it's a huge Greek weekend because everyone that's Greek has a, you know, section in the parade and all the organizations, you know, walk and it's a big thing, big weekend. So there's a lot of parties. So the teams that participated were Chi Upsilon Sigma, Lambda Upsilon Lambda, Sigma and Beta, Lambda Sigma Upsilon, Mu Sigma Upsilon, Lambda Theta Alpha, Lambda Pi Chi, Lambda Alpha Omega, Sigma Lambda Gamma. Do you remember which Sigma Lambda Gamma team it was? Was it even a New York team? It might've, it might've been like an, uh... Upstate New York team. Okay, it was in New York City. Sigma and Upsilon, Lambda Tau Omega, Sigma Eta Alpha, which they hadn't really participated since uh, prior to our show, so I think that might have been their first. And then Omega Phi Beta and Omega Phi Chi, Omega Phi Chi from New Jersey, Sophia Pinto. And Luz Remember that name? Yeah, yeah. That's right, Luz Eche Echevaria, Echevaria, one of those. There was another girl there, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so Show Night Club was interesting because A, it was actually a small floor space, tiny stage, which uh, uh, not an appropriate stage for a show show. But again, I was learning. I didn't know the game yet. I had not learned the rules of uh, live performance planning, event planning. And uh, I felt really bad about the stage being so small because these teams were like, you know, they have like really nice intricate uh, strolls and then they, they weren't really able to adequate, adequately um, display them. So again, that was a learning, a learning curve for me at show nightclub. So, and then here's, here's an aside. I remember at show, um, and I think you remember this, Asus, because this was an issue. We had a, a fraternity brother who was, high uh very inebriated 
and he was causing a ruckus. He was right in front at the stage area. Do you remember that? And no, uh, no, no. I, but, I, okay. but I'm sure it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He was he was causing. He was like being very aggressive and being very uh, abrasive and like almost like distracting, like disrespecting the people that were performing on stage. He was like right at the stage and he was just like yelling and like, but he, again, he was drunk, but I, I had to, he was causing an issue for us. Now, now you're getting. Yeah. Rep- yeah. yeah. I remember the guy now clearly and uh, the relationship with him changed that day. Yes. I remember. Right, right, right. But uh, again, he was causing a disruption. But I, I remember that. That was a, a small side note. But um, right. So show nightclub. You, I remember the. This is the one where Renata McNeil, right, from Lambda Tau Omega, emceed. She did a great job. Um, the place was packed. The venue was packed. The performances were great. And the winners. There were no winners. This is the ghost. That's right. Here. The infamous, this is the only year where Silk was not a competition in its history. The only year. If you ever go to trivia. That's the fun fact. (laughs) What year did Silk not be a competition? That was 2003. Um, Silk and Like in retrospect, years later, like that was the almost, and maybe, I mean, I wasn't producing the shows like you were backstage, but for me, from an execution side, that was the funnest show to be at. Like there was no pressure, there was no judging to worry sure. about. There was no seating. Everybody was in the crowd. It was a generally minus that one fraternity brother that was in front of the stage. Like it was a generally um, friendly experience. And people, you know, at that time were, you know, our big show was coming up in July, a month after that. So that was where the pressure was going to be. So this was kind of like the the calm before that that big storm. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, yeah, and and th- th- again, the, the show was well attended. I remember that club was like packed and it was hot. And uh, it was a great show, like performance wise. And like as you said, I, uh, I forgot there, there were no winners. But um, Silk 2, 2003. So that was a great performance, great show. I learned my learning key learning there was like, I need to make appropriate uh choices with staging that's like like critical it's like so critical um all right so then from june we move on to july and here is where all the work we had done in february in houston and chicago and albany this was the culminating event and i we do have the flyer ready to go we're going to share it um and can you see it Actually, you can see. Yep. Can you, do, you, do you see just the flyer or you see everything? My, see my whole the, screen. Yeah, just the flyer. Okay, good. So, right. So, this was a night, an Al Suarez, uh, you know, production. Our, our nice little brand new redesigned logo, top right. Back to the Bronx on the six train. I think the six train took you there. Latino Step National Championship, July 19, 2003. Lehman Center, and again, we had we discussed about Lehman Center, but Lehman Center was a very, very nice theater, not cheap, expensive as well. And then at the bottom, underneath here, we have this little definition of stepping, which I think we were trying to like educate people again on what it is. So it says, stepping is a complex performance involving synchronized percussive movement, singing, speaking, chanting, and drama. The Latino Step National Tournament has become a primary venue for expressing nuestra identidad. Wow, that's really nicely written. I wonder who wrote that. Yeah, that was uh, going to be an ad in uh, Urban Magazine, so I know that. Oh, was it? I totally forgot. That. That's why we probably added that little extra. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, for more info, please visit latinostep.com. I wonder if latinostep.com is available, the URL. If it's available still. Uh, someone's... Probably is. Nah, someone's taken that. That's because we because we use it for so long, and and Batanga had it for a while, and I don't know what they did with it, but they did nothing with it. That's what they did. Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, they might have still sat on it or redirected. No way, no way. Let's see, who owns LatinoStep.com? <laughs> Registrar. Let's see. Am I still sharing screen? Yeah. 
Uh, well, I just see the flyer, but um, yeah, just to talk a little bit about this show, as Anthony mentioned, the venues we were, you know, I think we were getting an A plus in the venues we were knocking out. You know, we had three consecutive great venues: Congress, um, uh, the Egg, and now back at Lehman. Uh, we we like Lehman a lot. Uh, I remember two thousand three. Just that's where I first met uh, Raúl, who later uh, Martinez. Yeah, Raúl Martinez. I first met him there. Um, I had heard about him because people were starting to like get in our ear about different MCs and and people we should talk to because you know that's the nice thing about having a business like this is that when people see what you're doing, they will volunteer connections and introductions to other great people. It's true. And Very so true. Raul, Raul hit the radar, and I remember him coming to this show. And, and the big rub with Raul for us at the start was, you know, we almost wanted to see some proof, some evidence of great performance before we just put you on our stage. And right. uh, he just didn't have, like, recordings at that time were not easy to get to, so he didn't have actual footage. So we were hearing great things, but we hadn't seen it yet. So um, anyway, but that was a side side note. Uh, and uh, yeah, this this show was going to be big. I think uh, Lehman. We were also pre-selling tickets here. Uh, Lehman right. Beach, through ticket. So I'll, I'll read the verbiage we have on the site. So July Latino Step 2003 finals held at Lehman College Center for Performing Arts. July 19, 2003 includes step performances by Landa Pi Chi, Sigma Landa Beta, Mu Sigma Upsilon, Landa Alpha Upsilon. Omega Phi Beta, Sigma Lambda Upsilon, Beta Kappa Psi, Omega Delta Phi, Kappa Delta Chi, Sigma Lambda Gamma, and a junior step team. So the the video that we showed of OD5, the one earlier in this uh, recording, was actually the OD5 from this show, correct? Yeah, yeah so that... Right. That was pretty cool. I don't know. Should we show it again or no? We're, we're good with OD5. No, we're good. Right. We're good. So yeah. So basically, the, our July show. This is like the the culminating event of the year for all of our shows. Even though we did Silk in June, Silk has it's only its second year, so it wasn't really as big. I mean, the June show. I think did Frank did any did Dave or Frank go to show nightclub to see this event? Uh, I want to say they had to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So they saw how good it was. All right, so then in terms of the step, the Latino step finals and the championship, I'll go through the winners. So the winning fraternity was Omega Delta Phi. A number two, a strong two was Beta Kappa Psi, and then Sigma Lambda Beta from, uh, where was this SOB team from? That one, which place, uh, second? For July, third place. Oh, third place. Um, I don't remember, to be honest. It okay. might have, oh, was it the Florida team that we flew in? And they came back to defend? And, Maybe. And, uh, Maybe. Yeah, I think they came back to defend. That's right, because, yes, 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 yes. It was the, the FSU, because they hadn't was? qualified anywhere else. Ah. Well, because they hadn't been in any shows, I think, as well. Yeah. Right. All right, so on a sorority side. Jesus, Jesus's favorite sorority, Omega Phi Beta, they won. Uh, number two, Mu Sigma Upsilon. And number three, Sigma Lambda Gamma, which again, I think they were from Florida too. So that was a, yeah, because they won uh, the year before. Yeah, I, I remember um, the pre-show more than I do the show. It's like when you get into the show, it's just like the, the two hours just fly it's a blur, past. blur, right. Yeah, it's a blur because you're running around, help, you know, working, et cetera. But before the show, we did photo shoots. Again, Al was there doing, you know, we had a, a, like, Lehman had a nice outside lobby area where we were doing some coordinated photo shoots. And we had teams really kind of flowing through there. We had so many sororities at that event that, yeah. like, so many of the right sororities, I should say, in terms of, right. um, you know, the show right. was built, this was year four, no, year five, right? 99, 2002. Yeah. Year five. Yeah of the show and uh, we had such a great history built um such a great kind of like following and and as anthony mentioned the stroll show just before that we had filled up a room so it was just like there was expectation that these events were just going to be massive right. and you had to be there you just couldn't miss out so uh um, 
And then we had sponsors. Um, I forget the exact sponsor for this show, but I know Urban had worked to get additional sponsors. But now we had Dave and the, the Army was also behind it as well. So it was a hodgepodge of just getting bigger and bigger. So it was an exciting time. It was. Um, but yeah, that that's basically our 2003. I don't know if there's anything else we should go over or... I think um, just to set up, I guess, what happens next, uh, or because we're, we'll talk about 2004. 2004 was a massive, massive year in terms of shows. Like, But I think the one thing we we step back and look at, a, a, after all the shows in 2003, we as we look forward to like what type of business we could run successfully and going through that step show, you know, kind of like friction and headache of trying to find teams every single show, we started to kind of decipher that the only way we're going to be able to scale what we're doing is by strolling and like doing more strolling. We can still do step, but we got to just it's hard. Yeah. We just got to include more strolling in what we do because it's easier. It's more uh, ubiquitous. So there's organizations that didn't step at all, you know, that strolled. And so, uh, so that's the one thing we, came out of 2003 we were battered and bruised i remember after that july show not wanting to do another show for for months but right um, but we had to (laughs) no yeah that that's a great point yeah i mean stepping was becoming it was challenging all these step shows were challenging because it's it's a lot of work for teams to get these routines together and i remember as a struggle always like having to like talk talk teams into it you know begging teams and it's just hard, you know, it's just a lot of work, like you having been on a, on a step team and I was on a team as well. It's a lot of hours you need to dedicate to have like a really tight, tight show like that Omega Delta Phi clip like that's like hours. That's like months and hours and hours of synchronization and just doing it over and over again. So yeah. it was it was it, it's challenging. The other, the other thing uh, we were doing in 2003, and I don't know if you remember this, but we were also trying to find other winning events that we could kind of replicate. So we, we did a, 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 a CFES Games in Jersey at the end of 2003, but that didn't go over too well. We did a winter. Right, ball. I have the flyer. Hold on. Let me share it. Yeah. We also had a so... winter ball in December because we thought maybe we could do something in December, you know, because we're, we're now trying to, how do we how do we keep every month having some sort of you know good event and that you know didn't go over so well either. Oh wait, that's that was that was with California C Fest. Do we? Oh, yeah, yeah. This was our California C Fest, but the flyer looks similar. Just ch- change out Los Angeles for New Jersey. Yeah. Wait, was it in New Jersey we did it? It was New yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Rexplex. <laughs> how do you how do you how do you remember that? The name it was just classic. I, I, I can't forget that name. Rex Plex by the Ikea in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yes, sir. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, um, we were, we were really building the brand. Um, I think 2004. Yeah. It, it's so funny how every year is just building on top of the previous year in like 2004. I'm excited about what, what we'll talk about there. Cause we did start to expand silk, like silk and smooth, or, or actually we, that was the last silk and smooth because then we chopped off smooth and we started going silk, silk three, silk four, et cetera. Um, so yeah. A lot oh man, that. dude, I forgot to share the Albany flyer. We just talked about the, the, uh, the show and I didn't share the flyer. Pull it up quick. If you want to just show it, if you have it. Yeah. There. Albany, August. Oh man, this is a different year, but I'm going to show it anyway. It's weird. Cause our notes say April 5th, but then this flyer says April 24th. We did the egg again. That's why. So it's, okay. it's a different year. Uh, let me share. You see this? Remember this? Yeah, that was. We went to the egg more than once. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, two times. Oh, it says it says back to the web on the flyer. Yeah, back to the web. <laughs> oh man. That was an Al Suarez, and then here's the old Icaramba logo. Yeah, that's the new LS logo as well. So it, it was uh, the second time around. Right, right, right. Okay. But, uh, excellent, man. Yeah, so looking forward to 2004 in the next episode. And uh, anything else that we missed out from 03 or? Mm, nothing I can recall.
This was the, uh, I think that battery that's right behind you as well, like that was a, probably an 03 classic because of the, the LS logo that, or the word. Yeah, it, it was an early year because the Icaramba logo is old. And then the 101 Latino College Show, we phased that out pretty quickly, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. I also yeah. came on board in 03. 03 was the first year where I joined LACOM full time towards the end. So after, I think I think we had set a timeline, like when we signed something like, you know, Anthony will be there year yeah. one and then I'll join after year one. So um, yeah, it, it was it was the start for me of like working full time alongside you and uh, and also the team. It was a great, like that experience. And, and we'll talk about it in future episodes, but that experience for me personally, showed me something new because I had always had this vision or mentality that you go to college, you get a job, you work at that job for 10 years, you work for the, somebody else. But in this, this way, I was the first person in my family who was like working for myself in a way, cause I owned yeah. this and I was working full time on the business. So it was brand new and it showed me something that I've taken, you know, throughout my life. So it was, uh, 2003 was a groundbreaking year for me personally because of that. Do you, do you remember what month then you joined in 03? It was late. It would have been October, September, October, right before. What was your, point. what was the first event you actually worked when you were in the office? I'm sure that you remember that. Yeah, I, I was, I remember being there for the, for the, 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 the New Jersey games. I didn't really work it, but I was coming in at, as it was about to happen. And then after it was the winter formal. So when we started working on that winter ball thing, then I was getting involved. Um, but that was such a horrible project to be starting with. <laughs> the winter ball. I don't know if we're going to talk about the winter ball, but I remember you being in the bathroom at the winter ball. Was that That's I remember. Yeah. You got sick. Yeah. And I remember you said, oh, yeah. you said to me, you said to me in your inebriation, you said, please don't let my fans see me like this. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I, I'm sure I said that. I don't remember it, but I, I do remember the cab ride home. I was in the cab. You were with your wife. I, I wasn't wife, in that cab ride. My brother, my brother Rob oh. was there, and uh, they gave me a plastic bag. I won't go into the details, but the hole oh. had a hole on it. And uh, anyway, it had a hole, and in you, the you, bottom, you were I, I blowing chunks, <laughs> blowing but, uh, chunks in the bag. That was the last event I I said I'm not doing this again. Now here's here's what's worse. Uh someone being drunk in the car, them throw throwing up outside the window of a car going on a hot down a highway going eighty miles an hour and all the trunks <laughs> flying right back into the car. <laughs> yeah. Projectile. Projectile uh um, projectile vomit. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so let, let's let's end it there on projectile vomit. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for tuning in everyone. We'll see you at the next episode. Please subscribe, leave some comments, uh, and that's it. Toodaloo. Peace.